Hey guys and welcome to another episode of Guitar Gods with me Alex Hutchings and today we're going to be talking about the amazing playing and fantastic career of the legendary Steve Vai. Coming up in this episode I'm going to be talking to you about playing Steve's actual guitar, it was one of these and how cool that was. Standing side stage with Andy James, watching him perform at a festival was pretty cool. When I bought all these guitars and uh, talking about a magazine interview that really changed my playing and kind of my life in a way, I'm going to be telling you the things I took away from that in the lesson section at the end. So stick around for that and we're going to get into a load more stuff too. Whilst you're here, why not give us a thumbs up and subscribe so you don't miss the next episode. So the NAMM show, California 2015, I remember being uh, in the Boss and Roland booth and uh, I was kind of playing away on some amps and stuff. And uh, Thomas Nordig, Steve Vai's wonderful guitar tech, was coming around and looking at some of the, the cool pedals and stuff that were going on at the time. And uh, he had Steve Vai's guitar on his back. It was the new 2016 version with lots of cool stuff on there. And uh, we got chatting and uh, he's like, hey, do you want to play it? And I'm like, absolutely yes. <laughs> and um, it was wonderful. So he allowed me to play it. It had a sustainer on there. Um, and some cool kind of uh, tuning device on, on the trem. Anyway, the cool thing was uh, I started playing it and then a bit of an audience kind of gathered round. And what I also noticed is that Thomas himself was actually filming me playing and, and he seemed to be really enjoying it and digging it. Um, so that was a wonderful feeling and uh, uh, there I am playing away. And uh, in fact, you know, we, we stayed in touch sort of a little bit since then um, and uh, I, I reached out to him to see if he had that footage but uh, I've not heard back yet so if any of you watching were there and have a clip I'd love to see it <laughs> so Frank Zappa Alcatraz David Lee Roth White Snake and what they all have in common Steve has played for them and probably loads of other stuff that I forgot to mention but wow what an incredible career um, not to mention all of his incredible solo work um, I first heard him like probably a lot of people on the Passion Warfare album I'm sure you're all big fans of that um, you know it's mind-blowing and incredible you know the I think most guitarists I talk to can hear pretty much 99% of that album in their mind is that that great. Uh, Flexible uh, is also a wonderful album. It's a little more, well it's not quirky, but it's uh, perhaps it wasn't as popular, but I really like it. It's got a lot of character, uh, so that's, that's a cool album too. Um, another album I really loved actually was The Vi Project with Devin Townsend and at the time when I first heard it, I, I can't remember, I was 11 or 12, and uh, I was pretty scared because the single was deep down in the pain and it was on like Headbangers Ball or something, MTV. And um, it scared the shit out of me because <laughs> I was so young. I'm like, whoa, you know, that's heavy, man. But actually, I remember when we, we bought the album, my brother and I, and we got it home and listened to the whole thing. It was a bit shocking, but actually, when you get to the end... Uh, with the warm regards, it was like, oh, wow, yeah, there's that classic, beautiful playing. And then as I grew accustomed to it, I grew to love the songs as well and some awesome playing in there, you know. After that, of course, we have uh, Alien Love Secrets and Fire Garden and that was really probably the last album I bought because around that time I think that was 96 97 my taste started to change ever so slightly and I was listening to people like Frank and Bali and we've already done the episode on Frank and right at that point was when I heard Frank about I was about 17 and I just bought the Fire Garden album which I also love by the way that's a really interesting and cool album I think Crime Machines on that one that's really good but uh, yeah, 
So on to uh, live DVDs. Now, the live in Denver, it was, it's interesting because when I saw that, of course it has Malmsteen and Satch, which there's also episodes on both Malmsteen and Satch in this series. But from Vi's perspective, here's the cool thing. So Satch comes out, plays awesome as he, as he always does. And Vi comes out with the triple neck Ibanez, right? And it was the first time in like, you know, seven or eight years that I'd really paid that much attention to Vi. So when I heard it, it really blew my mind. And I have to be honest, I had a lump in my throat when he finishes that final chord because it was weird because I'd had that distance away from him for several years. Um, I felt like I'd been kind of reunited with an old flame or something, you know, it was, I think, yeah, I've Clearly an emotional guy, I mentioned crying at Lady Andy Timmons' gig last episode. But these are the only two times, and this was just from watching a DVD. So again, the profound effect of music is, uh, is, is crazy, you know. So here's a cool little story. When I was about 15, I remember uh, going into my local guitar shop called Heron Music in Bristol, which is still there. And uh, I used to go in and they didn't have gems because it was a a small local store, but they did have RG Ibanez's. And at the time, man, it was my dream to even see a gem, let alone touch one and play one or own them. But we'll get to that in a minute. Um, So anyway, I would just always ask, please, can I have a go on the RG? And it was just the most amazing feeling. But of course, I'd learned a lot of the the, the tracks. I I remember learning Liberty, uh, For Love of God, all the classics, you know. And uh, there was this very cheesy and corny moment that could have been in a Wayne's World film, you know. So I play the solo, I'm playing the solo and I get to the to the main bit, you know, you know, I can't remember it after. I get to the main bit where it does all the, the, the craziness and um, I could tell like the guys in the shop were like waiting, like, is he going to do that bit? <laughs> so anyway, I do I do the thing and I'm just enjoying it. You know, there's no one else in the shop, just me and the guys. And um, the, the cheesiest part was like I was walking out. I said, oh, thank you very much. And I started to leave. He said, hey, kid, what's your name? <laughs> I was like, oh, Alex, Alex Hutchings. And he's like, all right. Anyway, the next time I went in, he uh, he offered me a Saturday job on the spot. And uh, and then, you know, I started to work there. And that was a bit of a turning point because then I met a lot of local musicians. Then I got into a band and started playing live and doing gigs and stuff. So uh, that was a really cool moment. <laughs> And here's a bit of advice, which is probably completely defunct in today's world. But anyway, I was about 22 and I remember getting a call for uh, an audition for like a big pop band. I remember it was the the manager of like Blue and all those kind of guys. And I figured, yeah, why not? I'll give this a go. So I turned up in a suit. I took this, uh, this blue floral gem. And for the audition, I played Sisters. <laughs> What the hell was I thinking? I mean, who the hell wants to hear that on a pop audition? But I guess I was trying to show that I could play, you know? And, um, and, oh, wow, it's coming back to me. Not only did I play Sisters, uh, I then created an arrangement of about, you know, I don't know, 10 or 15 different songs, like 30 seconds, just to show that I could play lots of different styles. Because they told me on the phone, this is going to be about 15 minutes of an audition. And me, like an idiot, I figured I had to play for 15 minutes. So I prepared Sisters, which is like five minutes. And then this whole backing track where I wrote 10 different, you know, uh, backing tracks for things like Nirvana and all that kind of stuff. And needless to say, I played about, I don't know, 30 or 40 seconds of Sisters. And they're like, okay, cool. That's that's enough. And uh, it was completely wrong for the gig. So uh, lesson learned, don't play Steve Vai stuff for a pop audition. But then again, most of you probably wouldn't do that anyway. So there you go. Just 
quickly on to my guitars. Yes, these are all my guitars and uh, you know, I love them. I think the first one I bought was the, the yellow one. This is not in the best condition, but you know, it was a chance of a gem. Then I bought the blue one, uh, second hand. They're all second hand, so don't think I'm made of money. I've just got them cheap over the years. Um, then the multicolored one from Heron Music, as I mentioned. So welcome to my living room. Yes, this is genuinely uh, where these guitars live. Um, I never really play them, so it's been really nice to dust them off for this video. Uh, a few years ago, I missed out on a Passion of Warfare Seven String Universe, uh, the multicolored one, and I just I was gutted. I didn't quite have enough money. He wasn't even asking for that much. I just didn't have the money on me. I was in uh, Copenhagen Guitar Show. And I kind of regret that. In fact, I might have the pictures on my phone. I'll try and find it. It was a good one. Uh, and I wish I'd bought it. But hey, it's, you know, you win some, you lose some. Uh, talking of losing some, I do have a seven string universe with the, um, with the triangular eye as well. But I left it in my mate's studio and I've not seen it for about five years. So I'm hoping someone hasn't nicked it and that it's still there. But anyway. <laughs> I remember reading an interview uh, with Steve Vai in a guitar magazine or something again many years ago. I was probably, I don't know, 16, 17 perhaps. And uh, two things really stuck out to me, which really helped my playing. Number one, he mentioned about practicing vibrato. So we'll talk about that a little bit in a second in the lesson. But um, the crazy thing is, because I didn't have any formal electric guitar tuition, um, that was never mentioned to me. So I think my vibrato really sucked. And actually my brother, who was a good player and did show me a few things, uh, would tell me quite often that, uh, you know, certain areas of my playing sucked. <laughs> um, but he wouldn't say what, and it was really frustrating. So he, I guess he wanted me to discover it for myself, you know? Um, and I think my bends and stuff probably sounded really awful, you know? But anyway, when I read that, it made me realize that that is something to practice. So vibrato, very important. That's like where a lot of the feel comes into things. The other thing that I took away from that same interview was where he mentioned about practicing for 12 hours a day. Um, I also read around this time that Franklin Barley had practiced around 10 to 12 hours uh, a day at one point in his life. And I figured to myself, wow, well, if I stand any chance of playing anywhere near these guys, I guess I'm gonna to have to do a similar sort of thing. Okay guys, so on to the lesson section. Now, I've changed guitar because this one's in standard tuning uh, and that might be a bit easier for you to follow along. Now, really quickly, like I mentioned about the magazine interview, uh, vibrato, it's an overlooked topic and uh, it's really good to practice because it gives you your unique flavor. So real simply, let's just take an E note on the G string. <laughs> You can do it in lots of different ways with just one finger with the second third probably not the pinky so much but uh, you can do it light heavy light heavy different speeds different strengths um you know vi does an interesting thing sometimes where he almost circles the note i'm sure you've seen it on his his dvds interesting it you kind of feel differently about it and that in itself can make you play differently so that's something uh cool to practice if you want to get a little bit more aggressive um grab the neck three fingers you get a lot more strength and it's kind of like a rocking motion you know for those of you that haven't really thought about this too much. Just rocking back side to side like that. Yeah, practice 
slowly practice up to tempo um, on to bending in and vibrato again pretty tricky definitely worth a practice okay a couple of licks um, things I associate with via the first kind of few licks that I really learned were from Ladies Night in Buffalo David Roth um, something like this uh, let's go to D minor now <laughs> simple uh, start on the A and the C and down. And that's it practice it round and round three four As it gets quicker you might want to do it as a hammer on and pull off uh, on the top and just pick the lower no, so that's kind of that, that time I was just picking one note per string. So that's kind of a good trick uh, to get out of picking it all. <laughs> sound as well which is cool another thing from that kind of solo is these mini sweeps which are cool again i'm playing it in standard i don't normally play in standard so uh forgive me if i fluff up a little bit but slowly they look like this ah i did it straight away here we go down Slide down to that A. Again, it's all D minor. that's something you can uh, have some fun with uh, little mini sweeps okay the final little idea is from that classic uh, for the love of god section and it's just a real simple thing but kind of useful if you're doing pentatonic stuff so this is back in e now something like this uh, again works nicely in e, e minor And simply, it's just a cool little chromatic run. So the, the basics of this lick are something like this. Now, again, I'm not I'm not kind of into teaching a very specific note for note it's more the concept which is cool so just think of that pattern you know make something up I mean, that's pretty close to probably what he does but then i think he just sort of mixes it up and again i'm more interested in uh, sharing some ideas that can kind of inspire you to you know to mess with it yourself you know so Wow, haven't 
than that for about 20 years but yeah what a beautiful solo that that track is okay guys so that pretty much wraps up this episode today thanks ever so much for watching i hope you enjoyed it and that you subscribe because next week we're going to be tackling one of the absolute greats uh there are no words really You're just gonna have to tune in to find out uh, I have got a bit of work on so I'm a bit busy in the next uh, week or two so if it's not next Friday I assure you it'll be the following and that's gonna be the end of this series I'm afraid um, it's so much work to get these done I love it but uh, you know I, I have to um, you know focus on some other things for a while but if the demand is there, then maybe I can look at a series two. There's certainly enough guitar players to warrant it. So, um, but anyway, uh, stick around for that uh, next time, and I'll see you soon. Wow, 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 wow.